Hey gang, welcome back to Power Boating in Paradise TV here with members of the Florida Power Boat Club, known to you guys as the Florida Power Boat Club channel here on YouTube. Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy here in the Pompano Beach studio and I am reliving a fantastic experience that we had in June of summer of 2022 for the 31st annual Bahamas Poker Run and it was indeed a spectacular event with incredible weather. And this episode, you are about to discover why being in South Florida is such a great location because you just skip across the Gulf Stream to the Bahamas. And this is truly where we put the word paradise into the equation, power boating in paradise, because going to the Bahamas is like no other event, guys. So let's get going. And before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our 2022 series sponsors include Blackwater Boats, and their sister company, Deep Impact Custom Boats, and their authorized sales center, Plantation Boat Mart. Mystic Power Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, and their authorized sales center, Top Gun Yachts, Cigarette Dealer, Chief Marine Group, Midnight Express Power Boats, Big Thunder Marine, Concept Boats, Performance Boat Center, Mercury Racing, and Florida Power Boat Club's longest running sponsor, Nortec High Performance Boats. And here we are now kicking things off uh, from Hallover Inlet, or at least near there. We overnighted at Hallover Marine Center. And uh, that, of course, straight ahead is where the Hallover Sandbar is. Look at the weather. Oh, my God. It's early Friday morning, second week of June, and we have got light winds, and we're going to have fantastic seas as we cross over the Gulf Stream. And if you happen to be looking for my cigarette from these shots, uh-uh, guys. Uh, we brought the family Sunseeker first time for this 50-foot Sunseeker Superhawk to cross over the Gulf Stream, and it is an ideal platform. Triple Mercury 502 EFI motors, and uh, that's going to be the slowest boat around, but <laughs> it'll at least be easy to see. And altogether, about 21 teams registered for the event, and quite a mix of boats. Obviously, a lot of center consoles, but still, a lot of these performance V-bottoms are hanging in there. We even had a few offshore performance catamarans. Different strokes for different folks, but we're all here for one reason, and that is to have a fantastic weekend in the Bahamas with members of the Florida Power Boat Club. Well, we're uh, right here at Hallover Inland, a beautiful Friday morning. We pushed the start about a half hour because we have got some calm seas, like it is a pond out there in the ocean. Uh, very light winds out of the south, single digit winds, about seven miles per hour. That means we're going to have a calm flat crossing all the way across the Gulf Stream. It gave us time to kind of slow down the pace in the morning, waiting for the helicopter now to come down from Pompano Beach. We're sitting right inside Hallover Inlet, you know, on the uh, on the opposite side of the bridge. So when the helicopter gets here, I'm going to circle in this big sun seeker, and the entire group of about 20 boats going to follow us out. We're going to go down the shoreline, which the reason for that really, so we get good lighting on all the boats. And then we can go offshore for about 10 or 15 miles with the chopper uh, to join us for this really spectacular start. Bahamas Poker Run, 31 years now, celebrating the club's longest running event with Florida Powerboat Club. Jones family on board the Sunseeker, our first time going to the Bahamas in the Sunseeker Super Hot. It's going to be an exciting day. And right on schedule, we've got our FPC photo crew uh, up here in this R44 helicopter flying with Pompano Coast to Coast helicopter from the Pompano Air Park which is about to half a mile from where we live in Pompano, but it only takes them about 20 minutes to get down to Hallover Inlet. So they've timed it just right. And here's what they get to see at about 500 feet as they comb the beach going southbound. And here they are in just really no time uh, flying over top of Hallover Marine Center and here now at the inlet. And want to thank the guys for uh, flying fast and furious with us today. Joe from Skyview Productions in the back seat of the helicopter. And of course, Jerry from Avatar Productions in the front seat shooting stills. And there she is, that brand new, well, new to us anyway, Sunseeker. It's a 1998 model, completely refit, and uh, you'll get a closer look as we proceed. But there's the calm inlet. You know, you're not going to be seeing the guys from Zip Zap or Wavy Boats or any of those guys here in the inlet this morning because, first of all, it's too early in the day. But secondly, there's not going to be any drama because there's no waves. Uh, so nobody's going to sink. Nobody's going to stuff a wave. And if plans go well, nobody's going to die today. So that's a good day for power boating, right, guys? <laughs> but just look at these boats. I mean, everybody looks so good. And I think this is the most variety we've ever had in a Bahamas fleet since I can remember. Let's kick things off here with Team Fast Bastard. That's right. <laughs> Great name. I love it. 
This is uh, Jeremy Riggs and his crew, a 2008 51-foot Outer Limits Sport Yacht, Triple Mercury Racing 700s. Uh, beautiful graphics, which you can't see because we're completely backlit right now. But guys, we, uh, we have the trick photography going on today. We're going to shoot left seat when we're facing the boat this way and give you this nice, really cool silhouette shot. But we now have the ability to fly over top and shoot outside the right seat, which we know now is going to be the well-lit side of the boat. So for you guys that are watching this uh, on our YouTube channel or Instagram, no comments, please, because we've got our shit together. See? There you go. We got it all figured out, guys. And uh, just look how great Jeremy Riggs and his crew look now. It was a bucket list poker run for them. They came 1,400 miles from Ohio to join us. So thanks, guys. Glad you could make it. And another team that came a long way to join us, Jason and Tiffany Ewell from Texas with this Nortec 340 Sport. It was their first time to the Bahamas. They said it was a blast, but we saw a lot of them in previous episodes because they just did the Orange Beach Powerboat Week with us in Alabama. And it's the Don and Don Show. That's right, enjoying their dirty little secrets, a 4400 concept quad mercury racing 450s. This is a great poker run boat, guys, but especially it's a great Bahamas boat. Why? Well, because of its size, for one, just look at you can bring about 15 friends along and everyone's got a seat. But one of the main features is something you can't see. It's that spacious cabin down below the center console. It's got a bathroom and a bed, so it's a perfect weekender boat. And it's another Nortec. This time it's Darren and Marcy Watkins from Louisiana and their Nortec 390 Sport. This one's got triple Mercury Racing 450s. And riding alongside there in that Techno Hulk, that's uh, his buddy Dustin Cloutre from Louisiana also. And it's another team all the way from Texas, Cannon Fay Milstead in their 38-foot statement, Team Easy Money. And loved the graphics on this boat and actually was in the club a while back with previous owners. So nice to see Cannon Fay enjoying the boat now. They used to do a lot of events at a very fast skater. So this center console marks a little bit of a change up in their boating lifestyle. Great showing from Nortec here as Daniel Krzyzewski is showing off his Nortec 390 Sport. This one with Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. Guys, that is the ideal Nortec 390 package, Quad Mercury Racing 450s. That's a lot of motor on that transom, but look at these other features like the twin row seating. You can see the cutout for the bow thruster. This is really the ideal Bahamas boat. And here is our official turning point, which is just off of government cut. This is a normal procedure for us where we pull the pace boat and all the group now off of plane and we're going to turn the boats and take a heading for Bimini now. The idea here is that we have already uh, used up you know, maybe eight or ten miles of helicopter time along the shoreline. Uh, we do have limitations on how far we can fly into the Gulf Stream and so because of that uh, this gives us the advantage of uh, really getting more photo and video of the boats before we turn and burn. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. That's us down here in the Sunseeker Superhawk down below us. And everyone uh, did as instructed just to hold off and let me get a lead. And then they all pulled the boats up on plane. And from the helm here of the Sunseeker, as we're heading due east, you can see the glare of the sun. Uh, that container ship off into the background and these are the kind of amazing conditions that you typically get in the summer months and that's why we generally do most of our Bahamas trips at this time of year. Flying alongside now our coast to coast helicopter R44 getting some good shots of the Sunseeker. I'm really excited because we just finished the boat. It was a full refit project over four months and so far she's running great. And winning for the farthest traveled award indeed is Karsten Melcher and his crew came all the way from Germany. Donzi ZRC with uh, big Teague motors. And I actually met the former owner of this boat. He's from California uh, just a few days ago. He was telling me all about the boat and uh, he saw it on some of our videos. And indeed, Karsten is always ready to put on a good show. Let's listen in. And a very special welcome to Will Kufis uh, from the west coast of Florida, Team Will Power Marine. This 
is an 02 32 skater that was completely redone just in time for the run. And a special welcome to Mark Fitzgerald, his first mate, Laura, who are celebrating their anniversary in this brand new 2022 36 foot statement cat. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, they ended up finishing the poker run with another couple on board, Scott and Carissa from Washington State, who are celebrating their honeymoon for the Bahamas run. And let's say hi to the Burke brothers, Sean and Pete, who are in this uh, 2017 Outer Limits SL41, triple Merc 400 hours. I remember seeing this boat at the Miami Boat Show back in February 2017. Haven't seen it since, but I'm glad to see it joining us now here for this Bahamas poker run. And it's another Nortec 390 Sport. This time it's Skip and Jessica McGee, all the way from Louisiana, on their first run with the club. And it has been truly an adventure for this couple, Scott and Carissa Carlson, uh, newlyweds from the state of Washington. Uh, when I say newlyweds, they just got married like the day before, and they purchased this formula on their way to Florida. So it's uh, <laughs> a new wedding, new marriage, new boat first time to the Bahamas that truly defines the word adventure as far as I'm concerned and it's one more time now with Daniel Krzyzewski from Ohio says he's got a home in Florida too uh, team Nortec 390 sport quad mercury racing 450 R's and got to look at that rooster tail and I've got to ask has he got jack plates uh, or is this boat just is it trimmed up just a little bit much because he's throwing quite the rooster tail here just getting some great footage and just look at how the sides of the boat light up as the white spray just lights up those silver graphics. It's Max Zeldich from Florida in this 36-foot cigarette gladiator team super bad looking good and sounding great the one and only cigarette on the run. And I gotta say, those gladiators are just beautiful boats. We don't have very many of them left in the club, so Max, I'm glad you still got yours. And it's one more time with uh, Darren and Marcy Watkins from Louisiana and their Nortec 390 Sport, triple mercury racing 450Rs. A nice package, it leaves you a little more room on the trans. And remember, this is a 10-foot beam boat, so when you bolt four of them on, it doesn't leave a lot of room for moving around back there. This is an amazing turnout for Nortec of the 21 registered boats. Six of them are Nortec center consoles. Five of them 390 sports and one a 340 sport. And some more time now with Sean and Pete Burke and their buddies on this 41 foot Outer Limits, a boat that was very rare when it first came out. We saw this at the 2017 February Miami Boat Show and it was like, what? They put outboards on an Outer Limits? What a great looking and great running boat. They said they had a fantastic time, trailered all the way from Boston they said in their video bio is one of the coolest vacations they've ever taken, being able to see all these power boats running together and then of course all the camaraderie of all the teams. And a little more time now with Jason and Tiffany Ewell all the way from Texas and Team Bad Addiction. And the addiction has really taken them over because uh, soon after this, they decided they needed another Nortec, a bigger one. So they have ordered the Nortec 400 Sport and they should have that by later this year. And it's one more time with Jeremy Riggs and his crew and Team Fast Bastard, 51-foot Outer Limits, hull number 20, he says, of this 2008 model. 1,400 miles all the way from Ohio was a bucket list event for the entire crew. Thanks for joining us. And back with our official pace boat, which is probably the slowest boat on the run. <laughs> but, but everybody was chilling out. We managed about 50 miles per hour. And I know that you guys are aware how much I love these project boats. And this one was really a lot easier than the cigarette. Uh, because we bought it as a clean boat from Michigan from one of our club members, John Froelich. I bought it the summer earlier, shipped it down to South Florida and pretty much stripped it down and took that old blue and white Sunseeker look, uh, redid the exterior with a, a charcoal wrap and the interior. We made some changes, mostly mechanical though. Uh, in the engine room, we added freshwater flushes. We changed out the tap system to a Lavore C 1050s. We added a, a bow thruster to the boat and we put sea deck up and down all the way from bow to stern. So. It's now really a very user-friendly boat, and it's its first trip to the Bahamas. And for those who want to know a little bit more, we will uh, get caught up on our productions here soon, and we'll probably have a little 10 or 15-minute uh, feature episode of all of the stuff we did on the boat. So if you have any questions about it, just uh, send me an email. And uh, after the refit, we did do a few more changes. We've added a brand-new phaser uh, diesel generator. The boat is available for charter based out of Pompano Beach. You can check it out online at superhawkadventures.com.
And now catching up with Team Wasabi, 42-foot mystic uh, Mike Pizzolante. And they have got a big crew on board today. You can't count them all, but I think there was 11 or 12 on board, and I think a couple more flew in. So they got as high as 14 crew members on this 42-foot mystic. Guys, that's why you want to own a center console, and that's what they're for, bringing all your friends and family and coming to the Bahamas for a powerboating and paradise adventure. And we have got such amazing conditions today that everybody's sitting up front and just having a great ride. And I was very happy to see Hayes and Carlin Wilson joining us with their new Nortec uh, Team Velocity. Well, at least new to them. It's a 2018 model, 390 Sport. Had all the features that they really liked in the boat. And as a matter of fact, I helped them personally to find that boat. They have been enjoying it ever since. And boy, does time fly because we first met them back in 2018. They did the Bahamas run. It was their 10th wedding anniversary. And they were in their 37-foot Everglades. And they just had such a great time and they knew that they were hooked. But they needed something just a little faster to keep up with the FPC bunch. And this boat is exactly what they needed. And they're having fun. they got five newcomers on board that have never done the Bahamas before. So it was an adventure for the entire team. And we welcome back now Mike and Olivia Lopez in their Sensation 40 CCX Team Gray Area. Uh, not their first run with the club. They've done it a few times and actually twice in this 40 CCX. It's a big change from their high performance 46 foot cigarette, but I think the ideal fit for this Bahamas run. And it's one more time with the Watkins crew on their Nortec 390 Sport. Uh, once again, six Nortex registered for the run. If you think you're seeing double, well, that's because there's a lot of 390s attending. Well, those beautiful conditions continued all the way across the Gulf Stream, about a 50 mile crossing from Miami. There's the shot from the transom of the Sunseeker as we wind around and looking forward about five miles off in the distance. Well, that's Bimini, guys. We've made it. And this is what it looks like when you arrive in paradise as we enter Bimini Harbor. Uh, off to the right, of course, that is the uh, island of North Bimini. And uh, you can't see it, but South Bimini is off to the left. And in the middle then is this channel that brings you into the Bimini Harbor. And the most popular destination at this end of the island, of course, is the Bimini Big Game Club, uh, which has been here for decades and uh, really has a lot of colorful stories of the past. And all of these celebrities and anglers and tournaments and events that took place here over the years. There's a nice shot. Now we've got Tyler flying the drone and uh, getting a little dizzy here, but uh, I think he's just getting his feet wet on that little mini Mavic. Uh, but he's got some great shots uh, here as we now just get the true picture of what it's like arriving at the big game club yes indeed guys there's a lot of sharks in the water uh, not like this uh, little nurse shark i'm talking big sharks like bull sharks that you don't want to tangle with <laughs> right here off the docks but we make this about a two hour stopover and the reason that we choose the big game club is because it's in close proximity to the customs clearance uh, immigration office and the customs office which makes it you know a lot easier for us to clear customs and then you know get on with our day because it's quite a hike to go up to the north end of the island uh, where the resorts world Bimini is and that's where of course we're gonna be staying uh, and there's not really any need to go all the way up there because we cannot check into the hotel yet uh, it's easier to get all of our stuff done here clear customs and immigration enjoy a late breakfast or lunch at the big game restaurant and then we can turn and now head south because all of the playground or all of the abundant destinations, which include the shipwreck Sapona and of course the anchorage at Honeymoon Harbor, which is where we feed the stingrays. A quick glimpse of our uh, Lavorsi instrumentation. You can see all the tachometers in sync and so far that uh, Sunseeker Superhawk been running great uh, as we now head for the Sapona shipwreck. And that's only about a five mile ride. So that makes Maxwell very happy because he loves climbing up on the top of the shipwreck and then jumping into the water. So we're gonna have a lot of activity there. And remember now it is Friday. So the one thing about coming to Bimini on the weekend is you're gonna get a lot of other boaters coming here. And luckily we're making the best out of this Friday because it's still fairly early in the day. And we did get here early in the afternoon. There were a lot of other boats already here, but we were pretty much able to enjoy it for the most part to ourselves as Tyler jumps off the bow of the Sapona shipwreck. Uh, and this is really the only time that you can enjoy it when it's not so rough. When it's bumpy and choppy here and you're getting bounced around, it's hard to swim. 
up to the ship. It's hard to swim into the ship. And you're not really going to enjoy this opponent experience as well. And <laughs> there he goes. Uh, indeed, Tyler uh, having some fun with his uh, little GoPro stick, uh, jumping off and doing a backflip off the deck of the boat. This is what it looks like up top of the shipwreck. You don't want to uh, head out here unless you know what you're doing. And whoa, <laughs> there he goes. There are a couple of anchoring buoys uh, remaining here at Sapona, not that many, so you have to be ready to throw an anchor. And my recommendation is to get as close to the ship as possible so it doesn't make that swim over to the ship very difficult because there are some currents here on a regular basis. And for those more interested about the Sapona itself, indeed it is a concrete ship. Uh, all of that uh, rusted look, it's all rusted rebar. Uh, it rolled up here, I think it is storm around in the 30s, I believe. Uh, there's a, quite a colorful story about the ship on Wikipedia. Next stop, just five miles further south, Honeymoon Harbor. And here we are. We've now arrived at uh, Gun Key, if you're looking on the map. And the little protected cove inside is called Honeymoon Harbor. Uh, it is a very popular attraction for boaters for so many reasons. One is just to throw an anchor so you can swim and play and have fun. But, of course, the attraction of feeding the stingrays is the big highlight here. And after doing it for so many years, we've got it down to a science. It's really easy, guys. They love squid. You can call it calamari if you want, but it's basically just big chunks of squid that we buy at the bait shop at the big game club. Uh, get out a sharp uh, fishing knife and chop it all up into tiny little chunks. Much more. <laughs> That's a big daddy chunk right there. Uh, but you can see I just get my cutting board out and cut it into small pieces. And then we put them in solo cups for everybody. And you can just, you know, one by one, just take little pieces of squid and feed it to the stingrays. And they absolutely love it. Now, to avoid any mishaps, uh, like you've heard about the crocodile hunter losing his life to one of these uh, with its severe barbs uh, that went through his heart. Indeed, that was a terrible and tragic incident. Uh, so being aware of that, we really have to do things in a controlled setting in very, very shallow water. And we always recommend that everyone is down in a kneeling or very firm position so you're not bobbling around or dancing around because if you get spooked when they come along underneath you and you start dancing around and you step on one of them, that's going to be a problem. And the nurse sharks get into the mix also. Uh, they've got much bigger mouths and a little bit of teeth, so uh, they can't really hurt you that badly, but you just need to be aware. The, the stingrays uh, don't really have any teeth whatsoever, but they do have the ability to ride up alongside you and you know they can leave a mark, almost like a little hickey if they get onto a, a soft part of your skin. Uh, but as I said earlier, it's important to do it the right way and you won't have any problems and you'll have a very enjoyable experience. Just love this shot uh, as Tyler pulls the drone wide and you get the chance to see where you can either anchor in the harbor or along the beach. Either way, it's a fantastic experience and on a beautiful day, it doesn't get much better. And fast forward to Saturday morning now, another beautiful day as we have a shot now of Bimini Bay Marina here at Resorts World Bimini. But we're not hanging around the, the resort today, guys. We're back out on the waterways now. The opposite side of the island, which would be the ocean side uh, facing west, we call it the North Beach. And this is a popular anchorage uh, because we've got this long, beautiful beach, more than a mile long. And you can see a lot of that new construction there along the beach, uh, Rockwell Island, they call it. It's all part of the... Bimini Resorts World uh, developments of private residents that are just beautiful. But right now it's all about the boats and it's all about this incredible beach. Uh, this is a popular stopover for the afternoon. Some people had a chance to go off and do a little snorkeling at a couple different locations, but for the most part you can get the boats really close to the beach and be able to wander around in the soft sand and this is just the ideal setting for a raft up. And we always suggest kind of a picnic format so you can go into town and pick up some uh, sandwiches and some snacks for the boat and this is just kind of a place to hang out and enjoy Bimini for what it has to offer. The majority of the boats here in this raft up belong to the club but on any given weekend in the summer uh, you can have a lot more boats along this beach and some of the best spots are taken up so we always recommend now to come to Bimini a little earlier or midweek in the summer months spend uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here 
and be on your way to other destinations on Friday afternoon. And that way you'll get the best of Bimini really, especially now since it's such a popular destination and being only 50 miles from Miami and that weekend warrior element can sometimes uh, take away from this experience that we can get on a midweek visit. So that's the format as we go forward. And moving along just a couple more hours in our Saturday agenda now, we find ourselves at the rooftop pool bar called Monkey Business here at Resorts World Bimini, and it's a fun place to hang out. This is where we got together for cocktails and met a few old friends in the pool, which, by the way, has scenic views of the island as well as the bay waters to the east. But it's also about the business of the poker run. So we had all of our teams play out their poker hands here. Celebrate Florida Powerboat Club's longest running poker run at 31 years. Congratulations to our winners with Karsten Melcher and Team Germany winning third place for their poker hand. Scott and Carissa Carlson, the newlyweds, managed to take second place in the poker run in spite of the fact that their formula broke down on the way they limped into the dock with one engine, and yet they were surprised to find out that they're still able to play the poker cards. Well, congratulations, guys. You got second place. And the winning team went to Mike Pizzolente and Team Wasabi on the 42-foot Mystic. They had the largest crew for the poker run, and then they should have also won the most spirited team. And it was a fun time in Bimini. We packed a lot into the two days, but guys, we got to keep moving. And it is now Sunday morning as we cross over the Bahama Bank. And you can see that we still have fantastic weather for this 90-mile ride, which took us about two hours altogether heading towards Chub Key. And here we are uh, with uh, Mark and Eileen Fisher. Their 120-foot Ocean Alexander happened to be just waiting for us here at the entrance to Chub Key. And here it is, entering the marina now, all a floating dock marina. And uh, they've got a gas dock upon arrival, so anybody who needs to score a little more fuel can do so as they arrive for lunch. And this has been a fabulous stopover uh, for us every time as uh, Tyler prepares the Sunseeker for docking. We had a little mechanical issue, and that's why everyone is already here at the lunch stop. We uh, had an engine problem, center engine, but we still had two good running motors managing about 35 to 40 miles uh, per hour as we came in so we're a little behind everybody but they all got situated and you can see looking down there's a few boats just kind of like uh, placed in through the marina a lot of big yachts here uh, and this is a relatively new marina that was created uh, over the last uh, 10 to 15 years and it really is an ideal location they call it really the hub of the bahamas the berry islands here so it really is a great location for all boaters whether you're power boaters with a club like us or if you're a yachtsman and you've got a big hundred footer and you're just looking for a place to hang out for a week or so and some people keep their boats here year round and then now you can see all of those nice villas and cottages that have been built in more recent years right in the center of everything is the big clubhouse here at chub key downstairs a beautiful restaurant which was ready and waiting we had sent in our food orders ahead of time so everyone was happy to you know be able to get here and very soon after arriving we were able to start having lunch and then you won't see it but upstairs they have rooms and then outside is this magnificent pool uh, which has beautiful views of the ocean and, of course, a nice sandy beach right there on our doorstep. And I've always been saying that we really should try to do an overnight here and stay for one night. And I think that would be a nice addition to the agenda before heading into Nassau because this is such a cool place. And we didn't take long to fill the pool up. And, of course, underneath that tiki is a full bar, a full swim-up bar. And that's the kind of thing that you you got to enjoy when you're in the Bahamas. And I would say this is the money shot thanks to my son Tyler who got the drone out and uh, I didn't even know he was getting all these great images of Chub Key, but it makes you want to stay longer, that's for sure. Uh, we've got about a 40 mile trip to go, so I had to start rounding people up in the pool and say, hey guys, uh, let's wrap it up, pay your checks, because we got to go boating some more. So fast forward about another hour and a half and here we are arriving at Atlantis uh, in Nassau, Nassau Harbor really. It was a 40 mile ride across, a little bit bumpy, uh, and we took off early with the Sunseeker because we knew we had that one engine problem, but with the conditions that we had, the big heavy 24,000 pound Sunseeker just crushed the waves. We managed about 38 to 40 miles per hour on the two engines, and uh, we had plans to get some repairs in NASA. Everyone else seemed to do fantastic, but as I said, it was a little bumpy across the Northwest Channel, 
and uh, for that reason, a lot of people backed it down just a little to have a nice ride. Of course, it's nice and calm now coming into Nassau Harbor. Look ahead and see all those cruise ships. That is a scene that tends to dominate the harbor here at Nassau, and it seems like Carnival has really the biggest presence here of all of the different cruise lines. Off to the right, you will see the Margaritaville Resort. Uh, that's a place that we stayed a couple of years earlier. Thought it was kind of nice, but the docks were a little bit exposed. Anybody that's coming here, I can tell you it's probably a good day trip to come over there. But, you know, you can't take away from Atlantis. I'm sorry, but it's just got too much to offer. And they have so many different ranges of, you know, accommodations and lodging here with the four different towers. But once you're on property, there's so much to do, like traveling through the underground dig, they call it. Uh, this is something that they have perfected, these underwater aquariums with just thousands of species of fish and really beautifully lit and well-maintained. And you can just get lost down here. I, I don't know. It, it's for all ages. I've been through here. I don't know how many times and every time I go through it just impresses me so much more uh, that they can maintain such an incredible aquarium and so many different species. But this is just a part of it, of course. Atlantis is known for its clubs, it's for its, uh, its amazing casino, uh, for all of its dining and other water park attractions like the Rapids River. Now I remember when we first came here years ago, they had the Lazy River, it was a lot of fun, but they, they turned it up a notch. There's Jackie, <laughs> she's like, bye honey. <laughs> They turned it up a notch with this Rapids River. And I don't care how old you are, if you're a if you're a 12-year-old kid or a 60-year-old adult, this is fun. And you can do this with the whole group. We ran into a lot of our club members along the way, but we just tried it out for ourselves a couple times and I couldn't get out of the pool. I could not get out of this river. It was so much fun. And you don't have to do anything special. You don't have to line up. You don't have to pay additional fees you just show up and you get a tube and you go and you get wet uh, but what they've done is they've created a water park that is you know fun and it's got the lazy river element to it as you can see jackie here she's just put putting along i think she's got a hold of my my foot <laughs> but then you get around the corner and then this giant wave comes out of nowhere and all hell breaks loose check this out <laughs> boom boom Okay, so moving on to our next day after a fun day at Atlantis. Now it's another fun day, but this time we're back on the boats heading in a southeast direction towards Spanish Wells and Harbor Island. It's about a 45-mile ride one way, and you can see once again we had great conditions. And today we're riding along on board with Captain Jordan Lambkin. He's been our area guide and really our angel watching over our club every time we come over here because he's got a mobile repair service, plenty of parts and mechanics, but also he's a local guide and he knows the Bahamas like the back of his hand. So he's actually providing us here today with this ride on this uh, 42 MTI. Not all of the boats came, but at least most of us did with our first stop here at the Pig Beach at Spanish Wells, which uh, you're about to find out is very well organized and managed. Uh, quite unlike our experience over by Staniel Key at uh, Big Major Key, where the pigs are kind of running wild and you just feed them randomly and they can be a little bullying at time and we've had some incidents there. These pigs tend to be much more docile and the food uh, intake is, is controlled so we only feed them a certain type of food. This gentleman uh, who runs the bar there uh, is in charge of uh, really hospitality if you will. In addition to making sure we all have drinks, there's a couple of guys working there on the beach helping him out. and. What they do is, for not a lot of money, they provide you with the type of snacks that are healthy for the pigs and yet enjoyable to the pigs. So the entertainment level is at its highest point at all times. As long as you got something to feed them, they're there putting on a show. And they're all very docile. Nobody got bit, nobody got bullied. And they even let you pick up their little babies, which I was impressed to see. I was actually shocked that there wasn't any mothers that freaked out because somebody picked up one of their little babies and they seem to just pass these little critters around like, uh, you know, like puppies. <laughs> and uh, all the girls loved it. In fact, we all loved it and we got some great pictures. So I'm just going to sit back here and enjoy the show the same way you guys are and watch our Florida Powerboat Club members uh, interact with these lovable creatures.
I think that these images give you the idea that we have certainly found paradise here in the Bahamas. Uh, this is a little hidden gem that I don't think a lot of people know about. So we checked off that box and uh, the next one to check off is lunch at Records Bar, just a couple of miles away. And just a hop, skip and a jump away now into the little harbor here at Spanish Wells, quaint little Bahamian town, something you would expect uh, way out in the far reaches of the Bahamas. So because this is considered to be an out island, it's not mainstream and therefore not really heavily populated. And it's hard to find a restaurant that is staffed well enough to accommodate a large group of, you know, 70 or 80 people. And that's about what we have today. So this again was all handled by Captain Jordan who actually came ahead and dropped off a lot of the staff that we brought from NASA. So we've actually planned this event for the FPC I'm bringing in the staff so that they could be ready to go once the people uh, arrived at the restaurant, that there was plenty of staffing at the bar and in the kitchen so that we could be served and we could have a nice experience. And, you know, that just goes to show that behind the scenes, in order to make a function like this work, there's a lot of moving parts, and that's exactly what we did uh, to pull off this lunch at Wreckers Bar. Thanks to Captain Jordan and all of the staff here at Wreckers Bar, it was a fantastic lunch. Everyone enjoyed the food. The weather continued to be beautiful, but we've got one more thing to do on our agenda for today, and that is to go out to the sandbar and have a little fun. So we loaded up the boats and we headed out to Royal Island. And once again, uh, not a very long ride, probably five or six miles, I'm guessing, maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And once again, Captain Jordan uh, leading the group. You can see they're all just kind of sitting here going, well, we're not really sure where we're going, but <laughs> okay. So, uh, so thanks to Captain Jordan. He's like taking us up here and everyone's just having a little fun here on the throttles and enjoying these beautiful calm conditions. Uh, the destination is Royal Island. Uh, it is at the, uh, I want to say, the uh, north end of this little island chain. And there's kind of a tricky entrance getting in there between two islands. So I'm quite certain that none of us would ever have found this uh, little piece of paradise without this local knowledge. And judging by the color of that water and the shallow shoals there, it's good that we stay in a single file as we pass through this little uh, inlet. Uh, some other local boats that we encountered, but here we are. We've now gone through the inlet and we are arriving at this little sandbar near Royal Island and much to our surprise you can see that the tide has been going out and look at this it is just a beautiful I'm talking about the bikini <laughs> no this is a beautiful place to be and I gotta say I mean out on the middle of nowhere they've got these swings that they put up uh, and so when the tide goes out it's about ankle deep we rafted the boats up nearby and uh, threw an anchor and this is where we are able to play for the next 90 minutes or so. A nice way to finish off an otherwise perfect day here in the Bahamas.
Well, guys, got to say, that's an awful lot of stuff to do in one day, but it was all in a 100-mile road trip, thanks to Captain Jordan Lampkin and all of his crew. Uh, they did an amazing day setting up this uh, agenda for the Tuesday run. And while we were out having fun, Captain Jordan had his mechanics working on the Sunseeker, so we were all good for the run home. Good noise. All right. Tuesday, uh, a Tuesday fun run sponsored by Lampkin Marine. Okay. And it's one more festive evening in Atlantis before we head home. No better way than with the Junkanoo Band. Check this out. Wednesday morning, uh, I've been uh, now five days on the water here in the Bahamas, uh, Bimini, Chub Key, Nassau, and of course, uh, Spanish Wells yesterday. Uh, back here on the Superhawk, leaving Nassau Harbor. Got about five boats with us in tow, and we took a couple of stowaways here, Marcel and Mandy from Team Germany. Um, while Karsten goes back to Chub Key and tries to fix the Donzi, they need to get home and get on a flight to get back to Germany. Uh, but we're going to... Uh, Cross our fingers and hope that we can get home on all the fuel we have here. Bimini, no fuel. Chub Key, no fuel. So we are going to perhaps relive a memorable Seinfeld episode where Kramer convinced the car salesman to go all the way and see how far they could make it on that tank of fuel. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. And if we have any problems, I'm sure we'll be able to see Shoreline. I'll get on my radio and I'll call Tobo US and say, bring me 20 gallons. Boom, that'll get us home. Uh, I'm going to take my chances here uh, because that's what I do. That's how I live, on the edge, right? Florida Powerboat Club here in the Bahamas, summer 22, summer 2022. Wow, 31 years here on this Bahamas poker run. So let's give it a go. Well, not all of us are gambling men, and uh, we decided to make a little stop here at the north end of Andros Island. It's a little settlement called Morgan's Bluff, and it has a commercial harbor and a gas dock. Uh, so once again, with the help of Captain Jordan, he mentioned that we should be going there. And of course, there was fuel there, and it's the only place in this area that you could get fuel. But more importantly, everyone was so kind and so welcoming. The entire town, all 10 of them, came out <laughs> to welcome us <laughs> as we got fuel. Uh, but you can see it's a pretty deep water harbor. And uh, we, so we were able to get uh, three or four boats in here and scored a little fuel. A discounted price of $8 per gallon. <laughs> That's right, you heard me right, it was $8 a gallon. Uh, but fuel is fuel and you needed to get home, so we didn't take a lot. We took maybe 50 gallons and everyone else felt better than knowing that we had the peace of mind and enough fuel to get all the way home because from here it was all the way back to Miami. We could certainly stop in Bimini and enjoy lunch and you know just one more little uh, break from the boat uh, before we head back to Miami. But yeah, we just kept going and you could see the conditions were fantastic. Sunseeker ran great after the repairs that we had done in Nassau. I would have to say that it was one of the most memorable Bahamas trips I've ever recalled in recent years. Enjoyed being with my family and all of my extended family with the Florida Powerboat Club. Mother Nature cooperated and it was Another one in the books for Florida Powerboat Club. But we're going to keep that enthusiasm going, guys, because it's still summer, and we've got another Bahamas trip planned, the Bahamas Blast, where we're going to recreate the entire agenda again in mid-August with an entirely new group of people. So stay with us for the next episode of Florida Powerboat Club's continuing adventures and you can't afford to miss another episode guys so be sure to stay tuned by subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new episode is released be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming poker run events in 2021 as well as membership information 
You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page, and you guys know who you are, and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.